So this is not just plugins for Mongo and MySQL. Uh, mostly it's about a new plugin that we wrote because the existing plugins that existed weren't, uh, weren't what we wanted to do. So the first question is when we talk about monitoring, what do we mean? Well, monitoring can mean threshold alerting, so it's page, get paged if some threshold is passed, passed, or it can mean graphing or trending. So you monitor something and you can see you know, capacity over time. So those are the two things we talk about when we talk about monitoring. Um, the plugins that we talk about for Nagios are mostly for uh, threshold alerting, but there are plugins in Nagios that you can get performance data and then graph the results as well. So why should you monitor? Um, well, you want to be notified of problems, or maybe be notified of a warning before it becomes a problem, so you don't have to wait. Um, I've had every company that I've worked for, other than consulting companies, didn't have monitoring when I started. Um, and I worked at a very big, the biggest uh, online gay dating site. And when I walked in the door, they had no monitoring. And I said, well, can we have a monitoring system? And they said, no, we don't have a budget. We don't have whatever. And we have customer services right here. They didn't outsource it. They had it in-house. Customer service, if replication doesn't work, we know within five minutes we get calls and guys are saying, I don't see myself online when I search. What's wrong? And they walk over. They walk next door, literally like from here to there. They walk next door and they said, there's a problem. The guys aren't seeing this online, replication's broken. So they didn't care because it wasn't a big deal. I said, don't, don't you want to know before it happens again? Well, no, it's not a big deal. So I said, okay, no monitoring system, but you know, can I uh, use my own database server and put a on it to monitor my database server? So they said, do whatever you want. You won't get any extra hardware from, but do whatever you want. So I took one of the test database servers and I put Nagios on it in addition to the test. And, was doing things, and then after a month or two, everyone said, oh, can you also uh, monitor Apache? Can you also monitor this? Can you also monitor that? So sometimes uh, you have to go do, do stuff that's important, uh, you know, without uh, permission and by yourself. Um, so uh, the other way you want to do is you want to find patterns. I mean, are they going to remember that uh, guys are calling at noon every day? You know, noon every Wednesday? No, they're not going to remember. Uh, and then also early warning for potential issues. Um, you also want to look at patterns for capacity planning. If you have graphing, you can see patterns of where is there a spike here, where is there a spike there. We had a huge spike in sales one time, and we didn't know why we had this big spike in sales at this dating site. And we looked and we saw when the last spike in sales was, and we realized it was three months before. Now this particular dating site has a deal like you can buy one month, three months, one, one week, one month, or three months. And three months before, they had a huge promotion. So everyone bought three months before, and they knew why the spike was three months before, because they said, I'll have a promotion here. But three months later, when there was a big spike, we didn't know why. We realized everyone's renewing from when they did that. So you want to be able to find patterns also for capacity planning. When people say, hey, is this big enough to get me for the next two years? Well, you have to ask, well, what do you mean next two years? You're going to grow the same rate? You're going to grow more? You're going to grow less? Um, and also, uh, to determine if there's a problem, uh, you want to look at things to see what's a cause of the problem versus what's a symptom of the problem. You know, the database is slow, it's not a cause, it's a symptom. What's making it slow? Maybe there's a bad distance, or maybe there's something else. So by looking at everything, you can see, you know, okay, the database number of statements is the same, so therefore it's not like there's more traffic coming to the database. So you can help find out problems that way. So there are a whole bunch of open source alerting solutions, not just Cacti, Union, Zabbix, Xenos, OpenNMS, there's even more. But this is just a list. I mean, there's. These are, you know, there's tons more out there, um, but uh, I picked Nigeria's because it's a standard. Um, it's something I've been using for 10 years, um, and uh, it's very flexible. If you can write a script for it, any script, a Perl script, PHP script, if it can run on command line, you can run it, so you can make a JavaScript. Anything that can run on command line, whether it's remotely or on the same sheet, you can write a script for it. And you can have Nodgers monitor. And the only thing with the Nodgers monitor is the output is either 0, 1, 2, or 3. 0 being OK, the exit code. 1 being uh, critical, 2 being warning, 3 being unknown. That's the, the whole thing. Or maybe it's 1 is warning and 2 is critical. So it's very easy to write custom checks. You want to write that a certain uh, you know, database table has certain values in it, you can do that. Um, there's very flexible ex escalations. So you can say, if this uh, threshold is met, what do you do? You can say page. You can say, well, the first time it's met page. The second time it's met, do nothing. 
or maybe the second time it's met after you know after five minutes, uh, if nobody responded, then page the manager, um, and you can page the whole. You know, you can have very flexible escalations um, for doing things. You can set time periods very easily to say, you know, hey, if it's between, maybe you have something that's a warning, and you want warnings during the workday, warnings should page you. But at night, warnings shouldn't page you. You can do that with Nachos. Um, there's also service dependencies, so that if your switch dies, um, you can say, okay, this is dependent on that, and this is dependent on that. So if your switch dies, you don't have to get a million pages because everything now is not reachable. Um, same thing, if MySQL is down, you don't have to worry about MySQL slow queries page you also, and every MySQL. Um, it also has a better now plugins to graph. There's a plugin called PNP, the, letter, the number four nodules, PNP for nodules that does cacti style graphing. Um, and cacti is kind of the other standard that I see in the world of graphing. It uses RRD tool. Um, it's not, it does have alerting in cacti, but it's not as flexible as Nodjus. So, uh, but the graphing is, is a lot better than what Nodjus used to have. With PNP for Nodjus, the graphing is great. You can zoom in on things. It's very, very flexible. So most people, uh, you know, standard use Nodjus for alerting and cacti for graphing, the two parts of monitoring. Some people use Nagios for both. Um, there's also commercial alerting solutions, so I decided to put this in here because some people are using these things. MySQL Enterprise Monitor, Monion, Oracle Grid Control, and Hyperic HQ. MySQL Enterprise Monitoring is an all-in-one solution for MySQL. It's commercial, um, but it has everything. It has monitoring the paging, and it has monitoring the graphic. Uh, and it's, it's uh, very little work to set up because everything is put in there, but it's because it knows a lot about MySQL, so it's very specialized. So you can still check things like disk and memory, um, but as far as I know, and somebody can correct me if they know, uh, you can't check things like a web server, or if you go to a web page and get it, is there a difference between this and that? I think you can, yeah, you can write plugins and extensions, but not that, not just any scripts. So it's really good if you have uh, different departments for things, and your department is responsible for MySQL, that's great. Um, but for me, I prefer to have something that can monitor everything. I prefer to have one place monitors everything, because somebody's already, right, somebody's already in charge of the monitoring system. So just add a few new checks. Well, I have a whole new system to be in charge of. Um, Monyog is similar. Um, it's a commercial product, and you can, I think it's, uh, it, it's a little harder to write plugins for, because I think that's all a closed source thing. Um, but both of, but Monyad will do things like uh, do an SSH tunnel and things like that. I think you do that to MySQL Enterprise Monitor too. Oracle Grid Control, uh, the Pythian group made an amazing plugin. I mean, nobody here uses Oracle probably, right? But they have, I mean, it's everything all in one. It's like Hyperic HQ. Uh, you basically just point it to a server and it just works. And with Hyperic HQ, I mean, it does everything. It does a patch, it does everything. I mean, there's, I don't even know if you can write scripts for it because when I took a look at everything in monitors, I couldn't think of anything else to write. Uh, so it's very good, but it costs a lot of money since it's commercial. So as I said, it's best to use what you already have. So if you already have some, if you, somebody, if your system administrator is already using Nagios to monitor things, why not use it? So this is kind of the decision that I have. So one of the great things about Nagios is that anybody can write a plug. Like I said, you write a script, it's a plug. The problem with Nagios is that anyone can write a plugin. <laughs> so uh, you have things. So there are some, there are two official plugins for Nagios that come with it when you download Nagios and install it and install the plugins. You get Check MySQL and Check MySQL Query. And Check MySQL does checks that MySQL is up and running. It can also check slave status. Uh, it checks seconds behind master to see if the slave left. Okay, that's a pretty nice check. And Check MySQL Query. Uh, does what you might think it does. It checks the results of a query. You give it a query, you select a query, and it checks the results. Now the problem is, and it, it has a range of what it can be. The problem is, is that the range is only numeric, and it is you have to have a range. So you can't say uh, anything greater than zero. You know, maybe you have a, a table that has rows, and you want at least one row in it. So you have to say like the range is from one to a million. You can't just say greater than zero. So it's not perfect. You know, it's just what comes with Nagios, and Nagios monitors so many things, and there's SNMP checks and NTP checks, so it can't do everything. Okay, fine. So I just explained this. D uh, DB connectivity, whether or not the slave is running, and lag behind master. Uh, check MySQL query checks the output of the queries in a certain range. 
Um, and check MySQL and check MySQL Query can both be run remotely. So you can run it on the centralized Nagios server and it can go and check. Now you have to have a, a Nagios username, just like if you have an application that talks to it, it needs an application username in MySQL. But that's not a big deal, not hard to do. You could also, so you don't necessarily have to have this uh, plugin run on each server you're checking. So there is a, there's a website called Nagios Exchange. And who, who here is actually using Nagios? Okay, do you know about Nagios Exchange? It's a third party plugin website. So if I write a script, I can upload it to Nagios Exchange and it's there. So remember when I said the problem is anyone can write a plugin? Well, there are 32, actually right now there's 33, because somebody put the check I wrote up there. But there, when I wrote this plugin, there were 32 different plugins for MySQL. In addition to the two that it comes with, right? That's a lot. So what are they? Uh, well, this big blue one here, there are, uh, what is it, 10? This is 10 of the checks, 10 of the 32 checks. So a third of the checks are slave level. Why do you need 10 different checks? Well, somebody wrote one and maybe somebody did one that calculates. Instead of using seconds behind master, maybe it goes to the master, gets the bin lock position, and gets the time, and then subtracts it. That's kind of the, the better way to do it. But 10 checks is a lot. Why do you need that? Um, the, these, uh, the orange one is variables. There are seven ones that, that check variables, which is kind of what we're going to be doing. This is what we wanted to do. Um, there are two for, um, there are two checks here that connect that check for a number of connections. There's one that's deprecated. There's one that's Microsoft SQL Server that's miscategorized in MySQL. And then this 11 is kind of other. It's uh, you know checking other random things that aren't have nothing to do with variables. Maybe it's you know I, for, I even forget what it is at this point. So we have uh, we have a few things. There are I made a matrix of the seven that we had. Some of them had similar names, and some of them I couldn't figure out what the name was. But basically, uh, we had the first check. So there are system variables, which is show variables, and there are status variables, show status. What we would like to do is be able to check calculations, right? And we don't want to necessarily check how many connections are there if there's more than 10 connections page. We want if there's more than 80% of max connections connected page, because if we increase max connections, we don't want to change the object's check. Um, so, and then also, I don't know how many folks here use Cacti and use the really good um, Cacti graphing tab templates that Barry Schwartz made. Um, I, I use them. One of the reasons he made those is because um, to go and do calculations and get information from, uh, from the database, if you wanted to get two variables, you had to connect two times. So there was no cache. So what he did is he wrote something that will do all the templates and connect once and get the information. So that was something we wanted as well because we wanted to have this caching. It was very important. It's very important to have this you know, caching so that if you wanted to check 10 different calculations, you're not connecting 10 times because then you're going to kill your database with all the connections. And if things start to get a little slow, then it's going to make it worse. So the first check, obviously, we, what we want is read all across. And so one check, and you could do one system variable and one status variable to check. But there was no caching and no calculations. Right? So you could say, give me what threads connected are, but you would have to know what max connections is and say, oh, if threads connected is greater than 80 because we have 100 max connections. And then if you change max connections, you have to change that. So there's a lot of hard coded thinking to do. Uh, check MySQL had this one has you can do status variable, one status variable, but no system variables. Check MySQL the status, same thing. Check MySQL stats. You can check uh, one system variable, and it did actually cache things, which was very nice to see. But you can only check one system variable. So you can check what max connections. You can't check the status. You can't check threads connected, right? You can't check query cache hits if you care about, you know, if you have a query cache or not. You can't check, you know, any of the statuses that are happening there. The number of slow queries. Check MySQL D was interesting because you could check more than one status variable. And you couldn't do any calculations. So you can check threads connected, but you can't check max connection. You can't do a calculation, and there was no caching. But the other thing was you could check many. So if you had four variables, it would be you know dash dash variables, threads connected, comma, uh, queue cache hits, comma, and then it would be 
warning dash w and then you have you know 10 comma 20 comma so if you do 10 different variables to check then your lists get very long and you're not just checking you're like okay so this fifth variable here what's the warning I have to count one two three four five in a list of dash w it was a little uh, kind of hacky that way um, now there were two other checks that actually did calculations but both of them had hard-coded calculations Check MySQL Help is one that we actually still use because it uh, can also check for the slave SQL thread versus the slave IO thread. It has that built in. Um, it does uh, like heartbeat and check heartbeat tables. Um, but it also advertised calculations. So you can check for max connections, you know, if it's over 80%, but that's hard coded. So you can't add your own ones in. If MySQL is a new, comes out with a new version and the variable name changes, you have to wait for them to update the code, or if you want a new calculation, you can't do it, you have to submit it to them. So it, it's great. It's great to see a bunch of this stuff and people say, let us know what you'd like to see. But for me, that's code for, this isn't really a flexible check. You can't do whatever you want. You can do what we tell you you can do, and that's it. Um, now, if, for me as a DBA, if I knew what I wanted, why can't I code it myself? What if my server comes with a new version and there's a new variable? Not just changing the name, but a new variable I want to check, or I want to check calculations. So obviously what I want is green all around, so uh, that's what we wrote. So we wrote something that does system variable, status variables, an arbitrary number, you, any number of it, caching, it does cache, and the calculations are flexible, and you specify the calculations. So the, how does the caching work? Well, we save the information to a file. So one of the, one of the options, parameters, to the, to the MySQL check we wrote is dash dash cache dash dirt. So it's a directory, and you can run this check remotely. So on your centralized Nagio server, you can have this cache directory. And the reason it's a directory is that it will save the host name or IP address either way and uh, port number into a file of, that's the name of the file, is the host name and port number, so that you can have 20 different checks going on in 20 different machines, and it's all cached into its own file. So if you want to, you can actually force the connection to do dash dash no cache. If you really want to go to the connection, maybe there's one particular check you always want to go. And if you want to cache, which you do this, you use the files that are connected again, max cache age equals you know, 60 or 60 seconds. So great, we have caching. It goes once, and if you have 10 checks, uh, and your max cache age is 10 minutes, and your checks run every five minutes, then it caches. And you don't have to connect 20 times. Um, the mode is variable comparison mode. We have other modes that we wrote into it, but for now, variable comparison mode. Now, here is actually a little bit of what the code looks like. Okay, we have a hash called metadata, and the key of the hash is, is var status. It's a hash of hashes. So there's a hash inside metadata of var status. And what that is is it's variables and status. It literally goes to the database, does a show global variable, show global status. Now those are key value pairs in themselves, value, you know, variable name and value. So threads connected on or whatever. So save that into the hash. Okay. And then what do you do? Well, you have an expression that you write. So you write expression threads connected divided by mass connections times 100. And it does word replacement. So it's very, very powerful because it's very, very flexible. And what you can do is you can change, you know, if you have different metadata you want to put in there, and I'll show you there is different metadata that you can put in there, um, you can do anything. Now, you could even, if you wanted to, uh, word replace the divided by sign. You wouldn't want to, but if you had that in your hash, it would replace it, because all the Perl code does, it says look for the word, and if I have the word, replace the word with what's in the value of, of the word in the cache, in the metadata hash. So the expression allows word replacement, and, you, and it's just evaluated by Perl, so it uses Perl. And the comparison is also very flexible. You give it the comparison. So you would say, right, you have threads connected divided by mass connections times 100 is your expression. Your, count, your comparison would be greater than 80, meaning if it's greater than 80 percent, page. OK. But you can also say not equals a string. You can also put a Perl function in there. It's very, very flexible. Um, you can make custom functions. This actually, the plugin itself came out of a different idea, which we'll talk about later today about a better MySQL tuner, where you can write your own configuration file for it. Um, and what happened there was it was doing word replacement. 
Um, and we actually have some custom functions like human readable. So the uptime, if you got the uptime, you could get it in a million seconds, or it would actually calculate how many days, how many you know hours, how many minutes. So that that was a custom variable, custom uh, function in Perl that we made. So you could theoretically do that here too. No reason why not. So here's a sample of command definition. If you've used Nagios, this is probably pretty familiar to you. Um, but basically, uh, Nagios uses a lot of templates. So you might see some, I guess there is not a template here, but they will be for a service. So there's, the way that Nagios works is that you have services, which are the things that are checked. And the service might be called, in this case, it would be uh, how many temp tables did you create since the last time it was flushed? You might want to know that. Very important, right? Um, this is not something that I think you can get in any of the other existing Nodules checks because they're all hard coded, but it's something we all want to know. Or maybe created temp disk tables divided by created temp tables, maybe as per second. You know, how many tables are going to disk we care about? Um, so you have the command might be check temporary tables, but the service would be check temporary tables and it uses this command. <laughs> okay, so the command is check MySQL temp tables is the name, and this is what the command line look, looks like. So the check we wrote is called MySQL health check.pl. This is just what the directory it's found in. So the host name is going to be the host address, whatever it is. The user and password, because it connects to the database and does a show of variables to get this. Here's the cache there, max cache age. The mode is the var comp, variable comparison. So here's the expression. Created 10 tables divided by uptime since flush status, and the comparison is greater than 10 divided by 60. Uh, 10 divided by 60 is basically if the expression is 1, it means there's 10 cre one created per second. 10 divided by 60 would be more than uh, 10 per second on average. So I, it, the, the point is, I could have written point whatever, whatever 10 divided by 60 is. But the point is, you don't have to because it's just going to evaluate in Perl. So if you wanted something to kind of help you figure out what does that mean, if I said comparison is greater than 0. Uh, 0.2755, that wouldn't mean anything, really. But if you say it's greater than 10 divided by 60, you can say, okay, it's more than 10 times per second. So that was just an example of how you don't have to necessarily put the number. So here would be this, here's what the service would look like. Note that the check command is very simple. Check command is check my spell temp tables. Here's the name of it, and you know you put the host name or whatever group that you want to check, and then use generic services that is a template that comes with Nagios, and so that that says that I mean you can and you can override it, but basically it's you know check it 24 by 7 and check it every five minutes and do this. So in order to make this very simple, because most people do something like this, this is what their services look like. It might say use critical service if it's you know pages all the time or use development service if it doesn't it never pages in only emails. But the idea is that that's it. So and then you can also add arguments and whatnot. There are also two other modes, long query and locked query. So locked query checks uh, to see how many how long a query is in the state of locked for. So you can say I want to be paged if there's a locked query or well, a query that's locked for more than a minute, I want to know. Um, same thing with long query, that's just if there's a query going longer than something. So if we have some reporting servers, and sometimes people run queries that take forever, and so we want to know. And so we'll say, hey, should we kill this? Right? If, it's, if there's a lot of locked queries, right, probably something we should kill. So locked query time would probably be shorter than long query time. But sometimes you want to know both. And what this does is instead of metadata uh, var status, that was that, that was the one for the variables, status variables and system variables. This is a different hash in the, met in the metadata hash. There's another hash called prop list, and it's the answer of show full process list. So it caches that too. Great. So here's a sample command definition for locked queries. So a command name, again, we have this, username, cache, your mode equals locked query, and then look, we have warning equals argument one, and critical equals argument two. Now why did we do it this way? Before, we just said if it's temporary tables is written a certain number. Well, you can put arguments in the other one too, but what happens is when you get to the service definition, you can put arguments in it. So I don't, for whatever reason, I don't have a slide in here, but if we go back to, the, to this definition, if we wanted to put arguments, we would have check my spell temp tables, exclamation point, argument one, exclamation point, argument two. And this way, 
right? Maybe you care, uh, maybe uh, you want to know about long queries running more than 60 seconds on your production server, but on your test server, okay, or on your reporting server, you want to know after five minutes. So the warning and critical times may not be the same. So that's why you would use an argument. Um, so, I mean, that's the meat of it. The, the code is not very long and it's on, uh, you can download it and it's, it's just a Perl script so you can look at it. Um, but what if you wanted to extend information? Okay, this is the subroutine. It's called fetch server metadata. And all you have to do is add a new hash key to, to metadata. Um, so for example, here's, here's an example of, let's say we wanted to run this. We wanted to get an EnoDB status. We wanted to do show engine EnoDB status and put that, the answer to the no right. Now show engine EnoDB status is not a very, um, not a very, not very good uh, query output. It's one row, I think. It's like one column and it's all in one column. So it's not a very good uh, key value pair in that sense. But I mean, you can uh, do select from information schema tables or performance schema. You could do that in 5.5. So it's very powerful. So this would be all you need is to do. And then in the code to parse it, you would just say, OK, when you are looking for word replacements, look in this too. Very not hard. So how do I know this? Because it's actually currently unused and in the server. It actually is in the code already. We already coded it. We don't use it in the calculation, but we coded it. So if you wanted to do it, you don't actually even have to, you don't have to write this part. This part's already written. That code is already in there. We don't use it yet, so all you have to do is do it. The last two are effectively commented out. Um, they are not actually documented and not used. Um, the show ID movie status is retrieved, but not used. And in fact, I actually had to uncomment it because in, in, a, in a recent one, because Show engineering to be status, you need to be super, have super privileges in the MySQL database. And I didn't want the monitoring user to have super privileges. Seems like a bad idea. So we'll probably end up taking that out. Um, but again, we could very easily, anyone can uh, make it do anything for show slave status, show master status, you know, any of the variables in there, um, and size them up. It's very, very simple code. I understood it and read it, and I am not a huge uh, developer that you know, does that. So there are some limitations. Uh, the first one, actually, uh, last week I put a test. I, no, I should have tested it. I put the, last week I actually put this patch to have, so dash dash comparison was only, would only, if it meant it, it would go critical. So we actually, uh, Renee, my coworker, actually patched it to have warning and critical. So it's the same comparison. So you could say, hey, if it's greater than uh, 70, warn, and if it's greater than 80, critical. Or you could say, if it's less than something, warning, and if it's greater than something, critical. Who knows what, what you would do. Um, you can't compare to a previous one. So what I would really love, and, and I wrote it, so what I would love even more right, than, than this is um, to be able to compare it to the previous run. So we're caching things. I'd like to cache the previous run because you don't necessarily just want uh, how many created temporary tables there were divided by flush status time. We want to know how many there were in the last five minutes. We don't want an average that over something that could be months. We want an average, you know, what just happened. Um, so that's actually in progress. I know somebody's actually working on patching that right now. Um, and it does do one checker calculation per Nagios service. So if you have 10 calculations you want to do, you have to have 10 Nagio services. Um, I don't see a way to get around this. Otherwise, we have what we were talking about before, where you have 10 different values for warning and 10 different values for critical. Um, and currently, it doesn't output for performance data. Um, now, output for performance data means that not only do you get, you know, warning, OK, critical, or on no measure output, but you get a number. Um, and that number can be used by, like I said, PMP for not just to graph things. So I think it would be very useful to help with that. Um, it's not very hard, it's just probably just whatever we spit out in the output, we have to just put the number first. Um, I think what we do is, and the other thing is if the check is okay, sometimes if it's a numerical check, we'll spit out the number, but for something like the long run query, we actually get someone say, we want the performance data, so we want the amount of the longest running query even if it doesn't hit the hit the threshold, um, the problem is is that because we're trying we try to make the long query long query check not just if it hits one thing or not just for the longest one it actually will report all of the long queries. We'll say there are five queries that are over 100 seconds, 
Um, so we have to figure out how to do that with performance data to say, well, what's the longest query? And then if it does hit, it's not just the longest query, it's all of them. So um, one thing that I also did, uh, I presented this at a uh, system administration conference. So I mean, we're DBAs here, we might go, okay, now I know what I want to check. I want to check temporary tables, I want to check this, I want to check that. Here's the standard checks that, that we use in my company. When we go to someone and they say, can you look at our modules? What do you use? Not everyone cares about temporary tables, not everyone has them. Um, so the highest priority is percentage of max connections, because you want to know, right? Um, so here's the expression, threads connected divided by max connections times 100. Uh, locked queries, long running queries, um, and if EnoDB is enabled. So here's the expression, have EnoDB, right? And then the comparison is not equal to yes. So if this is not equal to yes, meaning it says no or disabled or something else, then page us. Because sometimes, now Geos comes up and something's wrong with EnoDB and if you weren't checking the error logs, you didn't know. But it's up and running, and maybe the replication's still going, but now your tables are, if you create a new table and say engine equals EnoDB, and you don't have strict mode on, which most people know, it'll make the table as my ISO. And we've run into this a couple times, so this is, this uh, EnoDB, especially having EnoDB, this is something you can run once a day. You don't have to run it every five minutes, but you can. Um, there's also a percentage of sleeping connections. So you don't, when you have percentage of sleeping connections, you don't actually get, there's no sleeping connections variable in MySQL. You have the number of connections that are connected, the number that are running, and then the number of max connections. So this is a kind of a complicated expression, but this is the kind of stuff I wanted to do, right? So I take the number of threads connected minus the number of threads running, that gets me the sleep, number of sleep, divided by max connections, times 100. So I want to know how many of my total possible connections are already connected and sleeping. If I have 80% of my connections that are sleeping, or 80%, and it could be that I'm at 85% of my connections, it could be that every query is sleeping, that could be good or bad, depending on whether or not you have persistent connections. Um, but, you know, this, this is not the kind, this is not any, something that anybody has. None of the checks have. And it's flexible and you can look at it and it's obviously not one of our standard checks, right? But the question is, what, do you, what, would you, what would you want to calculate? Now you can calculate anything without having to upgrade. If there's a new variable, if the variable changes names, the variable changes names, you have to change it in your address check, right? But you upgrade MySQL, the last thing you want if, after you upgrade MySQL is all of your checks to fail, right? So not all of your checks will fail, only the ones that use a variable to change name. Um, and if you want a new calculation, because there's a new variable, you don't have to wait until somebody updates the plugin. You can just write a new check. So also, oh, this, uh, this actually is one of our standard checks, but uh, slave set is read-only and master's not. So if you want to make sure that your slaves are set as read-only, then you get expression is read-only, comparison not equal to yes. This is Perl here. And you can do anything. You know, you can actually say if uh, max connections is less than <coughs> Whatever you want. So I don't know if there's any questions or comments or anything like that. So I have one. Uh -huh. um, uh, my main problem with running Nigels are false positives. Okay. Uh, so you may say it's because you didn't set up correctly Nigels. Uh, I can give you an example of what happened recently. Mm -hmm. I have the, actually I have uh, some queries that are supposed to be long, uh, to be slow, uh, because simply they analyze a lot of data, they have to generate statistics, and we don't care if they are slow. So is there a way to exclude some tables or some queries, or to introduce some parameter to ignore some queries and get notified only about uh, other long-running queries? Right, so you were saying you had a lot of false positives or whatever, and so the question is, can you change the long query or long query to ignore certain things? Um, the answer is yes. For example, it already ignores um, slate replication. Because replication could be running for a year, and that's a long running query, but you wouldn't want it to page that replication is working properly. Um, so the answer is yes, there is not a parameter, it's not a hook to do it, but you can look in the code and, and see. Um, I can actually take a look, and we can see, we have some time now. So I can take a look and see where it is. It shouldn't be too difficult, because everything is very modularized. So 
it's not like you would have to hard code things in. You could probably easily put a parameter in and. Uh, yeah, but what we need is that the parameter makes science in a bit uh, configurable in something that can be used at right. runtime. Right because now, that's I, not. I want yeah. to do something on one server and something different on another server. Yeah, right now that's there's not a parameter, but you could put a you know ignore dash I ignore let's say and or maybe ignore tables or ignore you know something that a string matches, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So um, so let's see, my skill health check. So if we do, oops. Um, and let's see, so we want. Uh, Slave, but slave. So you can see here, it's just doing this. So it does a hash merge here and it executes that. And so that's all it does. Um, it's pretty simple. And this is this is just fetch metadata. Um, let's see what this one is. Load metadata. So this is if you're reading the file, all right? Should you get it from the server or should you get it there? Um, mm -hmm. This is actually comparing comparing the variable. Okay, so that's the end of the main. So I want the long query comparison. Okay, case long query. Uh, because it's already done that. So where is this? So it's somewhere, somewhere in here, it's doing, that's the half merge. probably very easily take this out into the parameter and then ignore things and do string matching and whatever you want to call. So uh, it is all very configurable. Obviously this is you know hard coded, probably shouldn't uh, be hard coded, but uh, or at least it should be out in a different thing because they even said you can add rules to skip specific queries or users. So the answer is not yet but not hard to do. Uh, and where can you get this? I'm glad you asked where you can get this. If you go to palominodb.com, so there's palominodb.com, community, you have appearances, presentations, white projects, projects, and white papers. If you go to projects, um, if I click it will take forever to connect, but if you go to projects, it's there, and that's where you can download the code. Um, and I think we're going to put it on Launchpad or something to have like Google code to have bug tracking and, and whatnot. But right now, people are just emailing these patches to do so. It's not uh, perfect, but you know. Um, and you can also find this presentation is under uh, community presentations. And I think the Najos project actually has a white paper of presentations linked on that project page. So, so that's it. And I hope you enjoyed and learned a little bit and are excited about it. I'm excited about it because just to be able to do a calculation. So, thank you.